everyone, welcome to church. It is so good to see you. It's so good to be with our online church community and those who aren't a part of the online church community. Welcome, we are City on a Hill and we're so excited to be with you guys today for our online service. And guess what? We have some fun things to do with you guys today. And we'll tell you about that a little bit later. But before we get into it, let's pray. So wherever you are, just bow your heads and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. We want to thank you for taking us through 2023. There is still a little bit of the year left, Lord, but we have gone through majority of it, and there's so many people who have been through so, so much. But no matter what they've been through, Lord, I know that you've been with them, and you will continue to go through with them to the following year. And Lord, we're so grateful. We're grateful to be here. We're thankful, Lord, for all that you've done. And I just pray for each person, Lord, wherever they're at, wherever they're at, Lord, if they are feeling tired from the year, if they're feeling empty, if they are feeling joyless, Lord, I pray that they experience you. And through our service today, Lord, that their cup gets a little bit more full, that their joy increases, their laughter abounds, Lord, and they know your peace. So I pray, Lord, that you will come into this service today and that you will touch each and every one of your people, no matter where they're at. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Jessica. And yes, just like Jessica mentioned, we have a very special service for you all. We have our church online Christmas family service today. Yeah, which is so exciting because the guys have been working so hard with from Christmas play mm -hmm. to the jokes. Um, and it's just going to be a great time together. So this is also a great opportunity, I find, to invite people who don't normally come to church, especially the people like the children and friends like who are in the play for a great way for them to see their friends doing the Christmas play nativity together. So we would love for you guys to share this um, link with people that you know so that they can come and hear the real reason for the season. Yes. And you know what? There's so much fun that we have for you today. But before we have that fun and before we jump into it, I have a question for you guys. And I want you to put the answers in the comment section. And my question for you is, what plans do you have for Christmas? Yes. And also, how long does it take you to get ready for the plans that you made? I mean, I know me, I try and make plans and unless like I'm, it's, I've got post-it notes everywhere and reminders, I, my plans don't really happen, right. you know, or my plans sometimes don't always go the way that I want. Yes. And one of the things that we want you guys to feel today is we want you to understand that God has a plan for Christmas. He has a plan and he had a plan. He had a plan thousands of years ago. And he, he, he laid this out, he set it out, and his plan is for you, his plan is for me, his plan is for Steph, and it is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful plan. And we are gonna look at that today and we're gonna find out what his plan was and what that means for myself, for yourself. And listen, y'all, God is totally awesome. Like, how can you have a plan thousands of years ago and it actually works out? So I'm excited. Are you excited? I am so excited, you guys. Like, this story never gets old. Never, never, never. never. So parents, stop what you're doing. Join your kids. Mom, put down the dishes. Dad, whatever you're doing, stop. I want all the family together. Let's watch, let's participate. We've got so much fun for you today. And so we're gonna go in and we're gonna get started with a Christmas carol. It's Christmas carol season. It's Christmas carol season. So we're gonna get into our time of worship. So whatever you're doing, let's enjoy it. Let's participate. Worship team, over to you. Thank you. 
such a good present. I don't know. Why is a foot such a good present? Because it's a great stocking filler. <laughs> you get it. It's pretty good, wasn't it? Oh, I've got one for you. What's the most popular Christmas wine? I don't know. What is the most popular Christmas wine? I don't like sprouts. <laughs> Did you get the answers? Welcome adults and kids to our first online family gathering. Is everyone ready to adventure through the Bible to find out about God's plans for Christmas? Let's go. Kids, do you know that all our Bibles are in two parts? The Old Testament, which is all the things before Jesus was born, and then the New Testament, which is all the things after Jesus came to earth as a person. But even before Jesus came to earth, God was planning. If you have a Bible and you look at the very first book, it's called Genesis, which just means beginnings. And it tells the story of the beginning of the world. But even back then, God had started planning Christmas. When God made the world, it was perfect. All the mountains and rivers and seas and plants and animals. And then God made people, the pinnacle of his creation. And the first two people that he made were Adam and Eve. And God loved them so much and wanted them to love and trust him. But Adam and Eve ended up choosing not to trust God. There was one tree they weren't to eat from, and they did. And by disobeying God, they let in the body, Satan. And he is described as like a snake in the book of Genesis. Boo! And it made everything go wrong. So what did God do? Well, he started planning Christmas. Maybe you don't believe me. Well, I have something very special here. Now, this might look like an ordinary phone, but for one day only, this is a back-in-time phone. And with this, 
I'm going to speak to some reporters on the spot in the Garden of Eden, listening in to what's happening. Let me just call my reporters right now. Jamie, Lola, are you there? Can you hear me? Hi, Sammy. We can hear you, loud and clear. This place is beautiful and new. But something awful has just happened. Adam and Eve have disobeyed God and Satan has come in looking like a snake. Let's hear what God has to say. I will make you and the woman hate each other. Her offspring and yours will always be enemies. Her offspring will, will crush your head and you will bite her offspring's heel. Wow, having your heel bitten would hurt, but having your head crushed would kill you. God told Satan that one day a child would be born and grow up to crush Satan's head. What do you think about that, Sammy? God said that one day a child would be born that would defeat Satan forever. I think that's amazing, Jamie and Lola. Thanks so much, guys. That was amazing to hear God's words there. Catch you in a bit. Bye. So the start of God's plan for Christmas was to send someone to defeat that horrible baddie, Satan, forever. Those words that we heard God speak to the snake is a verse recorded for us in Genesis. It's actually been called the Proto-Evangelium. That's just two Greek words, which mean the first good news or the first gospel, because it's the first note or first mention of God's plan to rescue mankind. A plan which seems to suggest that God would send someone to redeem humans following their rejection of him in the Garden of Eden. Isn't it amazing that when Adam and Eve failed to obey God, he didn't destroy them, but instead revealed his covenant of grace to them by promising a saviour, one who would restore the kingdom that had laterally been destroyed. God's method of grace was going to be costly. The heel of the Savior will be bruised, but it will result one day in the crushing of the serpent's head. A picture pointing to what would become the defining moment of the Christian faith. In fact, the defining moment of all human history, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I want to learn more about God's plan for Christmas. And our time traveling reporters are somewhere back there in the Old Testament. I think perhaps in the book of Isaiah. Now, let me show you where this book is in the Old Testament. If you go through to Psalms, then Proverbs, and then all the way through to Isaiah, that is where they are. I'm going to give my time traveling reporters a quick call and see where they've got to. Jamie, Lola, are you there? Where are you now? Yes, we're here. We've traveled forward 700 years from the Garden of Eden to Jerusalem. And we're here with the most famous prophet in the Bible. Isaiah. Isaiah, it's such a privilege to have you here on City on a Hill Church Online. Are we right that God has given you some sneak peeks on what his big plan is for Christmas? Yes, God has given me a message. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a child and will call him Emmanuel. A virgin will conceive? That means a mum having a baby without a dad. That's a true miracle. I wonder why God used that sign to show the miracle, much different to the miracles that we would pray for today. 
Didn't you hear? Isaiah said that God told him his child's name will be called Emmanuel. That means God with us. The child is going to be God. No wonder why his birth is going to be so unusual. God with us? That's a really special plan for Christmas. Hang on, I think Isaiah has something else to tell us. Yes, God told me something else. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. A son is given. We usually want presents for Christmas. Giving somebody a son for Christmas is something really, really special. Special to us, Isaiah said. Sami, what do you think about it? Wow, there's so much to think about. That's what I think. Thanks again, Jamie and Lola. This is great having you guys on the spot to hear these prophecies. Yeah, I'll come back to you guys in a moment. Speak soon. Bye. Weren't those amazing prophecies from Isaiah? And get this, boys and girls. They were written 700 years before Jesus would be born. 700 years! That's a really long time. Jamie and Lola were asking me what I think about this. Well, when I heard those prophecies from Isaiah, it reminded me of a story. A story about the famous American musician, Billy Joel. It's a story about a gift he gave his daughter on her 12th birthday. Billy Joel's daughter was in New York City and the pop musician was on the other side of the country in Los Angeles. And he phoned her that morning of her birthday and, and apologized for not being there. But he told her to expect the delivery of a large package before the end of the day. The daughter answered the doorbell that evening to find a seven foot tall, brightly wrapped box. And she tore it open and out stepped who? Her father, Billy Joel, fresh off the plane from the west coast of America. You see, the story of Christmas is about God sending a gift to you and to me. And not just any gift, but the gift of himself. That's what that word Emmanuel means, which we just heard Isaiah talk about. It means God was going to come in the flesh. God was going to come and, and be with us. Wow. And of course, 700 years later, God did come. Jesus became a member of the human race through a spectacular virgin birth. You see, since sin was brought into this world by a man, Adam, we read about that and heard about that a moment ago, saw that, didn't we? It had to be removed by a man. Jesus became a man to die for our sins. Our Savior needed to be fully human to take humanity's place. If he wasn't fully human, he wouldn't have been able to be a substitute for all of us humans on the cross. And if he wasn't born of a virgin, then he would have been born with a sinful nature. The writer of Hebrews puts it like this, For this reason he had to be made like them fully human in every way in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. You see, from the earliest parts of the Bible, it was understood that God could not forgive without sacrifice. All of us know when you truly forgive, it costs something, doesn't it? It means you or, or someone else must absorb the loss and, and the debt and the hurt. Christmas is all about a decision God made to say, I'm going to bear that cost myself. I'm going to absorb the loss and the hurt. And that's why Jesus came, to do exactly that. But you know what? Jesus wasn't just fully human with us. He was also fully God. Isaiah, who we heard from a moment ago, said 
that this child would be, that, that would be born, this, this son that would be given, would be called the Wonderful Counselor, the, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, fully human and fully God. You see, if Jesus is not God, his death would not have been sufficient to pay the penalty for the sins of the world. Only God can pay such an infinite penalty. And Isaiah went on to say that this child, this son, would have the government on his shoulders, which kind of just means that one day this child was going to rule forever. He, he is the king in charge of, of all kings. He is the Lord who is above all other lords. And his kingdom will be a kingdom that will last forever. And every wrong thing we see in this world, one day in his kingdom will be turned right. Wow. So God's plan for Christmas was, was to send someone who would defeat Satan, who, who would be born into the human race as a human, but born of a virgin, and, and would actually be God himself, come to live with us, and who will rule forever. Wow, we did tell you guys that this was going to be a big fun adventure together. Um, I am definitely enjoying this for sure. It's been amazing. And also, if you are joining us and you're like, what is happening here? <laughs> What's going on? Um, this is our own very special Christmas family service online um, that's been done by our amazing church online team, but also our kids church online team so a big thank you to all of you guys yeah i mean this is a great opportunity so if you have the link send it to somebody how about let them find out what christmas is about it's a really fun way to learn what it's about so we're about to go back into our service and when we go back in we are gonna start it up with a riddle so let's see who's up for it are you up for it i am so i love it. riddles although i can never figure them out <laughs> i'm really slow i'm really slow yeah, and please, like, once it does come up, please type in it as quickly as you can because there is a special surprise for the first person who gets the right answer. We want to send you something very special. Yes, how fast are your fingers? <laughs> we need some fire fingers that are so fast for this. So what we do want to suggest is when you put the answer, make sure to put your name on there. And this is an opportunity because we want to send you a gift, like we actually have something to send you. But if we don't have you on our database, we don't know where to send it to. So right now is a really good chance to figure out if you're on our database. There's going to be a link that pops up. Why not fill out that form? So don't forget, when you're filling out the answer, put your name. We can find you. If you're not on the database, put yourself on the database. Mm. But fast fingers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we are going to head back into our service and see what else they're going to do. Mm. What's the difference between the normal alphabet and the Christmas alphabet? The Christmas alphabet has no L! When does Christmas come before Thanksgiving? In the dictionary! I am a Christmas tree. I know, I don't look like one. I can be made into a cookie, a miniature figure, or a little house with icing. What am I? Gingerbread men! So what else can we find out? Let's go back again to our time-traveling reporters, Lola and Jamie. My special back-in-time phone tells me that they've landed in the book of Micah. He lived around the same time as Isaiah, and his book can also be found in the Old Testament prophet section. There you go, the book of Micah, and that's where we're gonna go. I'm gonna just give Lola and Jamie a call again. Lola, Jamie, are you there with the prophet Micah? Yes, we are. Meet Micah. 
So Micah, has God told you anything about his plans for Christmas? Yes, God has told me something about where the special person who is coming will be born. Listen to this. But you, Bethlehem, if, if Rapha, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel. Bethlehem, we all know who was born there. It's in half of our Christmas carols and on half our Christmas cards. Thank you so much, Micah. It's really good to know that that was always part of God's plan for Christmas. Back to you, Sammy. Thanks, Lola and Jamie. We'll catch up with you very soon. Bye. I don't know where you were born, but I was born in the Royal Ulster Hospital. Not a particular fancy or special place. But I've never heard of anyone predicting what town somebody would be born in hundreds of years before it happens. Many of us have heard of Bethlehem, but Bethlehem back in Bible times was considered little or insignificant among the cities of Judah. A bit like Cumbernauld or Livingston or Aberdeen, sorry if you live in any of those places. But even though Bethlehem was considered insignificant, it would serve as the birthplace of this future ruler. That's one of the great reminders about Christmas. Sometimes we can feel insignificant or, or little, or, or we've not got much going for us. But the Christmas story is a reminder that God takes insignificant things and through him makes them significant. God triumphs, if you like, amid human weakness. And never has that been so true than at Jesus' crucifixion. Wow, we have found out a lot about God's plans for Christmas. They might be a little bit different from our plans. A plan which actually started right at the beginning of time when God promised he would send someone to redeem humans following the rejection of him in the Garden of Eden. And then we hear more about the plan from Isaiah that, that God would come and, and be with us himself, Emmanuel. And he would be born of a, a virgin and, and therefore be fully human but without a sinful nature. And at the same time, he would be fully God. And just now, we've been learning, although he would be born in an insignificant city, he would be the ruler of Israel. In fact, he would be the King of kings and the Lord of all lords. I wonder if we can get one last view on the back in time phone. I've messaged Jamie and Lola to see if they can get somewhere really special for us for this last bit. And they've just messaged me back. Let me just see what they said. The message says, phone us, but be really quiet. Shh. Okay, I'm gonna try and phone them, but quiet everybody. Guys, are you there? What can you say? Yes, Sammy, we're here. It's amazing. There was no room in any of the inns, but we found baby Jesus here with his mother, Mary and Joseph. He's laying in an animal's manger. Look at him. God's plan for Christmas was God and Saviour of the whole world, as tiny as a baby. Isn't he cute? What an amazing plan for Christmas. Back to you, Sammy. And there he is. From the very beginning, God had started to plan this special baby. Babies are helpless and, and tiny, aren't they? The, the God who created 
everything was, was born as a helpless baby. He came from the, the palace of heaven and was born in an animal yard and laid in an animal feeding trough in Bethlehem. The message of Christmas is this. God who knows no before or after, who knows no boundaries, the one who spoke and galaxies and universes were created, entered our time and space and took on the shocking confines of a baby's skin. Why would God come this way as a baby? Well, when you look at the Old Testament in the Bible and you read the stories, you see many times people experience God. And every time they experience him, they are left with one emotion, fear. <laughs> they experience God. But I want to tell you today, there's a big difference between experiencing God and being with God. Why would God come this way as a baby? He did it to take away the barrier. The Creator God became a human being in the form of a man, Jesus, so that we could not just experience God, but so He could be with us and we could be with Him. Christmas and the Incarnation, that, that's just God becoming a human, means that God went to infinite lengths to make Himself one whom we can know personally. Christmas means, actually, that we're so lost, so unable to save ourselves, that, that nothing less than the birth and then the eventual death of the Son of God himself could save us. That means you are not somebody who can just pull yourself together and, and live a moral and good life. The message of Christmas is that no matter how hard we try, we could never get close to God. So he decided to come close to you. So he could be with you. And boys and girls, mums and dads, everyone else, if you'd like to find out more about Jesus, then why not get in touch with us at the email address coming up on the screen? Or, or ask someone you know in your community who follows Jesus, or, or why not come back and join us here on, on Church Online or at any of our six in-person gatherings across the city. Maybe today you're saying, Sammy, I want to know this God who came so far for me. This Christmas, maybe you're saying, I want to give my entire life to the one who is the author of life. Then. I would love to give you an opportunity today to respond. And why not? Why not use this prayer that I'm just about to pray and use it as your own prayer of commitment to God? And you can do this whether you're young or whether you're old, whether you're an adult or whether you're a young person today. And it's the kind of prayer that God loves to hear and loves to answer. So pray this. Dear God, today I give you my whole life. I turn from living life my way and I let you be king of my life. Thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross for my sin so that I could experience your forgiveness. I believe you rose from the dead and today I put my trust in you. I make you Lord of my life. Help me to live for you every day. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, then that is Brilliant, brilliant, well done. And can I encourage you, if, if you're watching live and on our platform right now, then you can click this button called, I prayed that prayer. Just do that now, click that button 
and we'd love to connect with someone who would love to pray with you. Or alternatively, if you're watching this back, then why don't you email the address now coming up on the screen? Or if you're a young person, a child today, why not talk to your mum or your dad about that prayer that you have just prayed today? We have come to the end of our journey today together. I hope you've had as much fun as we have. It leaves me with one last thing to say. Have a very happy Christmas when it comes. Let's finish with one last song together.
Wow, what a day. Yes. We have traveled through time from Adam and Eve in the garden, figuring out all those things that happened, hearing what God said, the message from Pastor Sammy. That's been an amazing day. And we want to say thank you to everybody involved. Thank you to our amazing kid actors. I mean, how yes. great were they? Yes. By the way, if you're at home and you want to act, get in touch. <laughs> like kids, we would love to get you on, you know, parents for that form. But thank you for our children who acted. Thank you for the kids team, the kids online team, the online team, the content team, the pastors, the hosts, everybody. Thank you. We're so appreciative because it really takes a big team to make this happen. So if you want to get involved, guys, get involved. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. And again, thank you so much to everyone who made this happen. And there is always next year as well. So if you're watching it and you're like, oh, I would love to be part of that, then there's always next year. Um, we have sadly come to the end of our service together today. Um, but also, mm -hmm. one of the things I love about Church Online is that we can actually meet together over Zoom and have a chat about things. And yes, coffee. Yes. Also, if you don't really like coffee, but grab like a hot chocolate um, yeah. or like a cup of tea, very British. I mean, <laughs> it's Christmas time. Here are your options for your virtual coffee, okay? It's gonna yes. be on Zoom. You've got an eggnog, you've got hot chocolate, you've got a chai latte. You've got standard mink tea or, you know, your builder's English tea. You've got a lot of options. It doesn't have to be coffee. I think it's eggnog season though, guys. What do you think? Yeah. Pumpkin yeah. latte? So get creative <laughs> and show it off on the Zoom. Like, I really want to see what your swirls are and who's got some barista skills. Yes, that is so great. That would be very exciting to see everyone's coffee there. Um, so yeah, please head over um, over on Zoom. We would love to speak to you and get to know you better as well and see what your thoughts were on the Christmas service together. Um, but also next week, we Ooh. also have our very special Christmas carol service together. So I'm really excited for that. I love carols. Like fun Me. question actually, what is your favorite Christmas carol? Oh, okay. Hmm. Drummer Boy, I have mm. to say. And I love Drummer Boy. And I have to say, I love Justin Bieber's because it's really like, yeah, so he raps on there. So guys, we want to also know what your favorite Christmas carol is. And by the way, we have kids next week, 9.30 on YouTube. So send out the link, join. It's for all the family. But yeah, I mean, our time is done. All that's left to do is to pray. Yes. And then go and get a pumpkin spice eggnog. <laughs> I love that. So yeah, let's let's pray together. Um, yeah. Father God, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you, God, that you have met with each person watching, God. And Father, we thank you so much that as we have reflected on the real reason for Christmas, which is you, Jesus, coming down to meet with us and to be with us and ultimately to save us when you would go to the cross, Father. And God, I thank you, Lord, for today, Lord. I thank you that you know each person, God. And I just pray that as they're walking into this week, Father, I pray that you would fill them with your joy, Father, and your peace and your grace, Lord, and that they would just know that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is with them every step of the way this week, and that you will just cover them and you'll be their shield and their protector, God. I thank you so much for the service, Lord, and we just pray that we will just fix our eyes on you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bye, guys. Bye. Have fun. <laughs> What do you call a disrespectful reindeer? Rudolph.